Hi, this is Dave Shell, the Training Peaks um, Education Manager. And as you're aware, we're going to be defaulting to the new Training Peaks starting November 1st. Um, so I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to show you around the new Training Peaks, um, and show you some of the improved features as well as some of the new features. Uh, so where I'm at right now is the calendar. Um, the first thing you might notice is that we're no longer um, kind of restricting you to a set number of weeks. The way this calendar works is it will auto size based on how much information is displayed on your calendar. Um, so the more workouts you add, the wider it's going, or the, I guess, longer it's going to make that week. Um, one of the new features is this auto scroll. Um, this is really nice in that you can scroll way into the past or way into the future without having to wait for it to load. Um, and when you want to return to today, it's really easy to just click the today button and it'll bring you right back to this week. Uh, if you like, if you want to go to a specific date, then you can click this date up here on the left um, that's highlighted blue. And then just click on the date and it'll take you right there. You'll notice how much faster this is than the classic training peaks um, as far as load times. In the week summary view here we have um, some planned versus completed bars with gray being the planned um, duration or distance, the color being or the light color being completed and then the dark color being what was completed over the planned um, distance, duration, TSS, what have you. Um, Right now, we don't have the ability to uh, configure what you want to see in this week summary, but that is coming. Um, two things that won't be immediately available when we switch over from Classic to the new training peaks are the annual training plan and the virtual coach. Um, the idea of that being is that right now is what we call the dreaming season here at Training Peaks where athletes have just finished up their season and are looking forward to next year and have big goals and big plans and so coaches are probably using the annual training plan around this time um, and we just figured if we couldn't have it available for you when you need it um, then we'd put more time into it and have it available by the next dreaming season so around next um, October or so, if, uh, but probably before that. Um, in the meantime, you can switch back to Classic. I'll show you how to do that in a moment um, and configure an annual training plan. And then you can see that show up in the week summary here. So hopefully that will help you to um, still continue planning the way you normally would using that annual training plan. Um, some of the other features here are, um, you can go full screen. So this is nice if you want to look at more than one week and plan for more than one week um, and um, one th another thing you'll notice here is that the banner placement has changed. Um, it used to be located over here on the left-hand side, it's now on the right um, and with that it's much easier to upload a logo. Um, you just click on it, it's going to bring up a file, and then you could select um, the file from your computer. Notice that the format is different than the current classic format, um, so the recommended size now is 335 by 80. Um, so when you first transition over from classic to the new training peaks, so your logo is probably not going to be formatted correctly. So um, you can use one of many different programs to reformat that, or if you're really having trouble, um, don't hesitate to send it to us and we can have one of our designers reformat it for you. Um, and you can do that at help.trainingpeaks.com. Um, Settings are still located in the same place. Click your name. Um, that's going to bring up this window which will give you access to settings. And um, this is where you can switch back to Classic to do some of those things that aren't available yet. Um, so let's take a look at settings here. In settings you have access to all the usual settings that you would um, normally have, such as your profile, um, your unit preference, read the redirect URLs, and also your email options. Um, and then you can also uh, configure your quick view options also from this um, from the settings. So this is, as you can see, it's sport specific. So you can change what you see in that quick view um, window when you're looking at a workout. So if you don't really care about elevation gain or elevation loss, then you can remove that from um, 
what's shown. So on the left hand side you see what's available and on the left hand, right hand side you see what's currently in use. So if I wanted to remove um, TSS I could just click the X and it removes it. If you scroll down a little bit further you'll see the metrics. So this is where you'll configure which metrics you want to show when you're adding a metric or recording a metric. Um, keep in mind that this does not configure them for your athletes, so you would want to let your athlete know that they'll have to configure these as well. Um, so next, next, let's take a look at the athlete library. Um, so one of the things that's changed is we now have this concept of being able to expand and collapse. And the idea behind that is that we're going to start adding more um, group functionality with the ability to drag and drop athletes between groups. Um, the other thing here is you can, as I scroll down, I have my assistant. So if I had more than one assistant, I could expand and um, collapse them as well. So hopefully this cleans up your athlete library. There are some coaches that have hundreds of athletes. Um, so as you start to put those in different groups, um, you'll be able to expand and collapse that to clean it up. Um, there will be also be some more filtering options as well. To add an athlete, uh, you just click the plus button, which is um, pretty much the same from Classic, and then select Add Athlete. Um, what you will notice is that we've reversed the order of the methods for adding an athlete. 95% of the time, you'll want to use this link here at the top. And um, this is not unique to the athlete, so you can send this to 50 different athletes. Um, and what will happen is when they click the link, they'll be prompted to either enter their existing username and password or to create a new account, and then they'll be attached to you. Um, in the um, event that you do want to create an account for an athlete, you can do that here below. Um, this is streamlined as well. Now you just need to enter a name, uh, choose the gender, select athlete type, and then choose a username. Select continue. And now I don't need to fill out any of this information. I'm just going to copy and paste this text here, send it to the e to, um, email it to the athlete, and then they can um, worry about filling out this information. Um, as a coach, you might want to enter the threshold power run pace if you know it with this new athlete. Um, otherwise, you can come back and add that later. Again, the first option is preferable, using that link, um, sending it to athletes and letting them either use their existing account or create a new account. That way they can choose their username. Um, within an individual athlete here, you can see um, this is how I would access settings. So again, the typical athlete settings that we have in Classic. Um, you can change their unit preference. One of the additions here is that a coach can now see with their premium athletes whether or not they um, have this option enabled. And this is receive post-activity comment notifications. Um, so this is a really powerful tool and that you can, when you leave a comment on a workout, the athlete receives an email saying that you've left a comment. Uh, um, so if you happen to be leaving comments and the athlete's not responding to them, then you could come into the settings here and make sure that they have this enabled. Um, you can also access the zones much more um, quickly and efficiently here than you could in Classic, along with the um, threshold notifications. Um, the other options we have here is um, if it's a coach paid premium athlete, I could downgrade here. Um, I could share this athlete with another coach. Or I could remove the athlete um, with this icon here. Now, note that this does not delete the athlete. If I were to remove this athlete, it would revert him to a basic account, but he would still have access to the account, still be able to log in and um, have access to all his historical information. So don't ever worry about removing an, or detaching an athlete from your account. Um, down the road, if I wanted to add him back, I could send him the link. He could um, click it, enter his existing username and password, and be reattached to me. Um, here's a nice new feature. Now if I can, I just click this, 
um, it'll bring up my email client and allow me to email that athlete directly. Um, now let's talk about planning. Um, planning hasn't changed a whole lot in the new training peaks. I click the plus and it brings up a workout. Um, and then it shows up on my calendar. Um, what has changed is workout libraries. It's much easier to start building out those workout libraries now. Um, so if I just go down here to my workout library, I already have quite a few um, created. And again, you see this concept of expanding and collapsing these libraries um, to clean up the library. Uh, some enhanced uh, um, features for filtering and sorting libraries will be coming down the road. Um, but for now, it's still highly functional. Um, now, the new feature here is that I can just drag and drop into a library. Um, whatever library I currently have open will be the one that it first selects, but I can still choose a different library if I wanted to. Um, so this is great for coaches who are just starting to build out workout libraries or maybe you wanted to create a different one um, and you have several weeks planned for an athlete, then you can just start dragging and dropping um, pretty quickly to start building out that workout library. To create a new workout library, simply um, click the plus button, workout library, and then you can um, name it, add a description if you want, and then save it. Um, libraries also have their own settings, so that can be accessed by this hamburger menu here. Um, so let me do one that I've actually created. So this one here, if I wanted to share it with another coach, I could do that by clicking the hamburger menu, share, and then enter that coach's email address. On the planning side um, for training plans, we've really streamlined this process. If you recall in Classic, you once you wanted to create a training plan, you would be presented with a white um, page and you had a lot of information that probably wasn't applicable to what you were trying to do if you're creating a plan for internal use. Um, so we've streamlined it. Now I just click this, create my plan, say next, and then create plan. So now I don't have that information asking me how much I want to charge, the description, who it's for. Um, I just get right to creating the plan. Um, one huge improvement here is that rather than having real dates for this plan now, um, we have week numbers and we have week um, day numbers, I guess. So this is great if, say, I wanted to create a 12-week plan for a specific event, I could scroll to the future here, add my race, And then I could start planning backwards. Um, so it makes it much easier to plan if you have a specific time frame in mind. If you want to create a plan from an existing athlete, um, the new Training Peaks also makes this easier in that you can copy from an athlete and paste into a plan multiple months at a time. Um, so let's just take a look at how to do that real quick. I'm going to load myself. could then select the first date and scroll into the future as we talked about before with this infinite scrolling. And I would hold shift select my last date, copy items, switch back over to my plan here paste, and now I have a plan that I can apply to other athletes. Um, to apply this plan, I would just click on it, could select athletes, and then I could apply it on um, the same date or separate dates. I can also see a plan preview here um, that shows distance and duration, so this can be pretty helpful as well. Um, 
And if I wanted to sell this plan, I could do so under the settings here, publish plan. Here I could set the price, add a coupon if I wanted to. Um, and we also have this option to add to a private web page. So I could just add it. And this is great in that um, it allows the athletes that are looking for your plans to only see your plans and none of the other um, coaches' plans in the store. So that's uh, a pretty nice feature here as well. So now let's take a look at um, analyzing a file and how um, that looks in the new training peaks. So I click on a file to open it, and um, one of the things that have, ch that have changed from Classic to the new Training Peaks is in Classic we had these tabs for um, different reports such as time and heart rate zones and time and pace zones, time and power zones. Um, so we've consolidated that. So I open this, I get the quick view summary giving me completed distance, um, elevation gain, whatever I have configured under my settings. Um, but I can also access some of these quick reports here, um, such as this map and graph. You see that as I hover over different channels, it's going to highlight that in the tooltip. Um, here's the time and heart rate zones. Power. Um, and then if I wanted to dig in a little bit further, I can expand this. And now you'll see what um, kind of that classic map and graph. But the nice thing about this in the new training peaks is that you can actually configure it based on sport type. Um, and so that way, this is, that's what you're going to see each time you open it. Um, so I have quite a few charts added on mine right now. Um, and I can add charts by clicking here and then just dragging and dropping onto this um, reports page, but I can also remove um, reports if I don't want them, I can resize them, I can um, change the order that they appear in. So again, very customizable here, um, and again, sport specific. So I'm not going to have a power chart on a run um, workout or um, any other inapplicable chart. Let's scroll down here. Some of the improvements on the map and graph. Um, one is we have this ability to quick fix. So this can be um, really helpful if I have some erroneous data for heart rate, say. Um, I can highlight the section and then I can click fix. Say OK. And what that's going to do is pick the first data point and the last data point and then draw a straight line between them to um, remove that um, spike. I can also delete channels. Um, so if I didn't want to see temperature here, I could just delete this whole channel. Um, and another function here is smoothing. This might be helpful if you're comparing intervals. Um, just eliminate some of that noise. You can also, um, just as you can in Classic, you can hide channels. Um, right now it's just single, um, but we will be adding the ability to hide all channels or other channels um, in the near future. Now let's switch over to the dashboard. Um, probably one of my favorite features in this new dashboard is that each chart can have its own individual date range and title. Um, this is great. You can see here that I have three of the peak power charts with comparisons turned on, um, but for different date ranges. Um, so I'm looking at 2012 here, 2013, um, and then I'm also comparing it with last year, or um, actually 2012. And then I have this year versus last year. So it's a great way to look at um, seasons back to back, or you could even compare different races um, side by side here. Um, one thing that maybe some coach didn't know that you could do in Classic, um, that you can still do in the new Training Peaks, is by clicking on that peak power, I can bring up that workout to see where I set that um, peak power. Um, so along those same lines, with the PMC now, um, in the classic training peaks, uh, 
sometimes you would get some erroneous TSS that would throw off the entire PMC. Um, really seem to happen, especially with swim workouts. Um, or even if an athlete happened to upload a run as a bike, you would get a large number of TSS that would throw off the PMC. And so coaches would have to go through and identify those outliers and then switch back to the calendar and find the workout and update them. Um, in the new training peaks, I can find those TSS, just click on it, and then I can see um, which workouts were done that day, and then I could click in on it and update that TSS if need be. Um, again, you can have multiple charts. Charts can have different date ranges, um, custom titles, and if you want to add more charts, you just go ahead and um, click that charts library here and drag and drop. One chart that is not currently available um, is the peak power profile chart, or power profile chart, um, but I'm happy to say that will actually be coming um, in the next week or so, so look for that. Um, just a few things that I maybe forgot to touch on when we were talking about planning. Um, we just added the ability to hide a workout, which a lot of coaches use. Um, maybe they plan, they might do an entire month of planning, but only want to reveal two weeks at a time. Um, so you can now hide workouts in um, the new training peaks by clicking the hamburger menu and then hide. Um, and that'll be denoted by this eye icon at the top here. Um, Right now, you cannot hide an entire week. That's going to be coming soon, as is locking workouts. Um, so coaches like to use locked workouts so that athletes can't move them around. Um, and it will actually be improved in that athletes won't be able to change the description or any of the um, planned fields either. So that's a big improvement. So look for that coming soon. Um, lastly, I just want to show, um, you're probably familiar with the different ways we have to upload files to Training Peaks. Um, the most popular probably being the desktop software device agent. Um, recently we announced this Garmin AutoSync, which allows athletes with Garmin devices, um, as soon as it uploads to Garmin Connect, sometimes through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, um, it automatically gets pushed to Training Peaks. So that's a great feature. Um, now athletes don't even have to log into their account to upload those workout files. It's a huge help to a coach. Um, this is a new feature that's specific to the new training peaks. Um, so I just downloaded a file which appears right off my screen. Um, but I can actually drag and drop onto the calendar and it will upload that workout to the um, correct day and athlete based on that, um, the date in the file. So again, Lots of new features in the new training peaks and still a lot more features to come. Um, so thanks for taking the time to watch this video. And if you have any um, feedback or suggestions, please let us know because we always appreciate it. Um, and if you have any questions or want further information about anything I touched on today, please go to help.trainingpeaks.com. Um, you'll find most of your answers there. If you don't, then um, please submit a ticket and we're really good about getting back to you. Thanks.